Hey guys, this is Darwin Gaming, and this is going to be another Raid Shadow Legends video. Welcome back to the channel, everyone, and welcome back to the free to play account. Uh, the grind for the fusion has little has been a little bit interesting, and seems they turned out to be a little bit more difficult than I than I thought. Honestly, I mean, yes, I did expect it to be hard. I did expect it to be a little bit more difficult because of the shard situations, because you know. Early on, you do not have the clan boss uh, rewards. You do not have the Doom Tower rewards to get free voids or sacred shards to be able to to push for this for the for the fusions. Especially when when you're desperate to at least get them, if not like when some of the champion chase groups or someone or the summon rushes get those points because they're quite high up. So. As an update to how this one actually looks, I am currently at 40 fragments. The way that the way that this has gone so far, I have missed 10 fragments uh, from the champion chase milestone because I couldn't get to that 2,500. <laughs> no matter how much I I saved those shards, maybe I should have saved those sacred shards to pull during the summer rush, but I guess that's fine. And I lost the first five fragments from the dungeon divers. If you remember correct, if you remember guys, the first. Uh, the first dungeon divers that came up, it was just just with a with a it was at the same time with the dragon, and I think it was for one day only, and it was a three thousand three hundred. Was pretty high. It was it was impossible for me to to get there unless I used everything of my gems. Maybe even like that, I wouldn't have done it. So I just quit on it. However, at the same time, I managed to get everything else. So apart from those fifteen that I lost, I got everything else, and I even managed to compensate by. Look at this, taking second place in the champion chase one. So this this was me pulling mystery shards, the two uh, the two sacred ancients. I managed to I managed to get second place here, which hooray! That was really awesome because you know at the end of the day, these five I compensated at least five of the ten, and then at the same time, I managed to get first place in the arena one. I sniped the arena, the classic arena one, to in order to be able to get another five. So basically, I am currently only five short from the dungeon divers that I didn't get. Managed to get everything else. I'm just scared a little bit of the next uh, artifact enhancement one, but I should be able to do it because it's only two artifact enhancements and it's three dungeon divers. Sometimes they do three artifact enhancements and that can be really tricky for lower level accounts because getting silver is quite hard. So with those ones in mind, I managed to even get to, let me see, I, I just, I think the golem one should just finish. Yeah, the golem one just finished. I just went till there. This was a little bit high, 16, 16, 60. But the way that I've done it is like Ivy Lee mentioned in one of her videos, shout out to Ivy Lee Gaming, is uh, I farmed the dungeon divers, the ice golem and the champion training all at the same time. What I did basically was I farmed stage 10 with like this, I would have my starter Elhain, three food champions and uh, Apothecary in there. So the food champions would die and these two could solo the stage 10. Unfortunately, the one of the things that uh, people maybe do not know, uh, for dungeons there's certain milestones that you, you need to try to get at. And that is the first one is usually stage 13. For, because from stage 13, you start getting six star uh, artifacts as well, which are extremely important. Obviously, they're really good. By the time you get here, you should stop like you should stop saving four star even before honestly, because four star gear, like I said, I think I mentioned in my previous videos, four star gear unless they they are like epic or legendary and they have really really good substats, like all of the substats are good. And in the right sets, I wouldn't keep four star because you can get five star gear pretty fast, and then you can transition to six star. The next goal that you're looking for achieving is after 13 is stage 16 because from stage 16 you do not get bruise and mystery shards anymore. I'm not sure how many people know that but up until stage 16 like stages 15 and under you can still get one brew which is stupid or like the mystery shards which you know early on they're helpful but if you want mystery shards you're just gonna go and farm campaign and you're going to get the mystery shards from there so these are like the most important milestones for for something like this so yeah this is how i've done it with the with the with the ice golem and then with the dragon which was before i think yeah with the dragon i was doing stage 12 because this was reliable you always try to fight the stages that are reliable and that you make sure that you're as close to 100 percent of a run successful that means you're not losing energy because every time you lose a run 
you lose that energy and lost energy especially for a free to play low spend is extremely important so you're trying to even if it means that like okay you can do stage 16 but it's like 70 percent but you can do stage 13 100 percent still do stage 13. do the ones that gives you as much as uh, as many rewards from your energy used as possible not as as little you know just for for the beginnings like quantity over quality and you know it's still it's still success rate is really important for finite i guess this is gonna be the tricky one and the reason is because of the shield part it can be a little bit more difficult to take it down and that this is the next one that starts tomorrow however i have prepared the trick up my sleeve i guess for that and that is i guess the fact of using talia that has this skill that places counter attack on herself and has a chance to place weekend. So basically, if I have Talion there that places the counter attack on herself, when the boss attacks us, she counter attacks, and because she has a triple hit around the A1, this makes her insanely good for the Fire Knight. Boss attacks, she counter attacks, three hits on the shield means if the shield is like on 10 techs, she hits three times, it's down to seven techs. At the same time, I have an Apothecary that has a triple hit around the A1, which is extremely good as a champion, like I said. Then again, Elhane, unless it's wrong affinity, she always has double hit on the A1, double hits here, double hits here. So I have like the, the team for to to try and tackle Finite and see as high up as I can get for that. While we are talking about the dungeons and places to farm and right places to farm, uh, I think I showed you last time I managed to finish my faction guardians for high elves, so everything's full. And because I finished that, I said, okay, maybe the next stage I will go to farm is is lifesteal actually i'm not gonna go and farm the lifesteal yet because i've i've just been randomly farming the dungeons for for these missions like i've advanced quite a little bit i'm like 16 already past the the sacred one like like we saw in the last video they keep advancing to these ones and one of my next goals is get to rank six champions but in the meantime let's talk about the the farming like i said the best place to farm in this game if we're talking about uh experience and silver so like the best balance between uh, getting experience and silver is brutal if you see down here let me keep moving myself brutal brimstone path stage 12 and here stage 3 because shields sell for the most silver in in this game like if we're not talking about accessories ring amulets and banners from these pieces the shield sells for the most so 12-3 is the best one to <coughs> sorry 12-3 is the best one to farm for campaign so basically what i'm using is this one over here let me show you let me just put another team in there to do a run while i explain it so what i'm using is simple the re uh, i'm also using a preset I'm using a preset to force elhane to use her a3 because this one has low cooldown and does roughly the same damage she likes to keep using the a2 so i force her to use the a3 first because it's a good aoe apart from that she basically she's able to basically clear the waves on herself uh, on her own even if everybody dies she can still do it it's not the fastest but it's like at a, at a decent speed and uh the reason why she can do this pretty easily without any worry is uh two reasons actually one she's strong affinity which means that uh they can weak hit so this the 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 cycle in this game is like uh different from every other game of like what's strong versus what's what's uh, weak affinity so for example in this one as you see here magic is strong affinity versus spirit Spirit is strong affinity versus force, force is strong affinity versus magic, and void is like, that's the neutral affinity, you cannot get stronger or weak affinity. The way the, the affinities work here, it means that, <clears throat> for example, if she's strong affinity versus someone, she gains an extra 15% crit rate and I think an extra, I don't remember what, a little bit of damage as well, so the damage goes higher by a little bit. At the same time, if she's strong affinity versus them, if somebody that's spirit, which is most of the waves, hit her, they have a 35% chance to weak hit. Weak hitting means they barely do any damage, which is obviously really important because that makes it easier for her to survive. So this is something that you need to keep in mind and that's something that's really important because sometimes like the stages, I'll give you an example for me because most of my core teams, as you see here, their magic so the stages that i might be getting stuck and most people might be getting stuck <clears throat> early on, on like for example dungeons will be the stages that have 
uh, that have force affinity. So, for example, once I'm going to get to this point, like, okay, fine, nice stage 13, like I said, is the next milestone. Stage 13 is force. So what I would have to do is try to somehow pass it and then get to farm stage 14 or just farm the stage lower. And something really important to keep in mind. Let me show you how my... Uh, how my Elhane is built for farming the stage 12 3 of the campaign which like i said <clears throat> it's the best place to farm food and like you know farm silver at the same time because early on that's the priority you keep needing to farm food and level up your champions to get as many six stars as you possibly can and then slowly slowly start farming the dungeons later on from my point of view uh the best time to stop farming for gear like I showed in the previous video I was farming six sevens for speed gear and then now I could I could go to farm the other stage that gives lifesteal which is stage uh, let me double check stage eight I think yeah stage eight Voldemort straight so I should maybe come start farming over here or start farming these three so I can get defense percentage pieces and maybe speed boots but I think I will not be doing that because I'm getting close to farming if I get, I think if I get Apothecary 6 star or my next 6 star, I will be able to farm stage 13 of the dragon consistently. So, from my point of view, and like I think uh, some other people mentioned this, or like they might agree as well, as soon as you can farm stage 13 of the dragon, I think that's that's the time when you when you stop farming for gear in the in the campaign because you have a chance of getting 6 star gear that's not just common or uncommon as you would get from like. If you'd farm Nightmare, which is kind of hard. So I would suggest as soon as people get to this point, start farming this. Maybe stop farming the, the campaign as much. Because Dragon is the, the dungeon that you need to farm the most, I guess, for the first like three to six months of the game. Dragon and maybe the Spider to get accessory. But Dragon is the most important one because it gives you speed gear that's really good. Life steal is really good. Accuracy. Toxic can be useful. Destroy can help you for the Doom Tower. Boss, Carabos, Stalwart can be really good against the clan boss, and even Frost and Days. Avenging maybe is like it's meh, don't really doesn't really matter. But early on, Dragon is the best place to farm. So let me show you. I was going to say earlier. Let me show you. This is how I have my Elhane built. The speed boot that I got for the logging rewards, the chest I got from the logging rewards, the glove I got from the logging rewards. And the weapon that I got from the logging, logging rewards. This one was lucky. I rolled triple speed and has really, really good substats together. And then I completed this with a crit rate set. Crit rate, as you see, crit rate, crit damage. Accuracy doesn't help, but crit rate, crit damage. Crit rate, crit damage. So she is basically 100% crit rate, pretty fast. 2.7k attack and 100% crit damage. So with these stats, as you saw, she could do 12-3 pretty easily. Because of the lifesteal, she would always heal back, she would never have an issue. And the masteries, in case you didn't check my other videos, these, were, these are her masteries for basically campaign farming, dungeon farming, arena, like, you know, everything. At the beginning, you're using them for everything. <clears throat> so yeah, this is the type of stats that you would need for somebody. Now, I currently have 800 gems. The gem mine is already maxed. So the next thing I could do is I... Honestly, if there wasn't a fusion going on, the next thing that I would have done is I would have bought masteries for my next six star, which is going to be Apothecary. I was debating like, okay, maybe Thylesia, maybe somebody else, but by looking at my core team, I only have one proper support, which is the best one, Apothecary, as, termit as speed booster and uh, healer. So I said, you know what? I already have like three DPSs. Let me just make him as my next one because marked i don't want to six star yet she's gonna be the last one of the of these five because who knows who i'm gonna pull next i might pull somebody that does this better than her if i don't then she's gonna be a six star she's gonna be my clan boss team and i'm just gonna hope to get uh, another marked one day to use for for the resin fusion but let's six star my apothecary let me see not yet okay i will do this after i finish because i still want to Actually, let's use the bruise. This is another thing, like I think I mentioned before. This is how I'm trying to be efficient because there's champion training. For six, for five star people, you, I would use six bruise, gets us to 24, and then one uncommon gets us to 25. This way, it gives you points. This this thing gives you points. Let me just pull the mystery shot to have more uncommons. Do the same thing for everybody else, and get my apostle carry to six star. So, like I said, six bruise. And one uncommon, boom, 25. That's two. 
Then the next one. Third one, same thing. Six brews. Obviously trying to be efficient with your brews because, you know, you can get pretty low on them. But, you know, if, if, you, if you use them right, you should be fine. So I have one, two, three, four. And now the last one. Let me see. Yeah, this was the last one that I was preparing. Same thing as you see. For the for the four star ones, I used three brews on everyone to get them to stage 16 or, or to stage 18. Or I just farm campaign to get them to this stage. So let's get pit spawn to five star. This is my next one. Let's get some brews in there. Six brews again. Six brews and one common. 25. And now let's get my apothecary to six star. Like I mentioned in previous videos, I'm sorry about this dude, but Cyan is, is like, I'm sorry, he's too useless. I, I don't like him. <laughs> he's not helpful at all, so I'm just not gonna, I'm not gonna keep him as a champion. His kit is too weird. He might have some random niche uses, but nothing that makes me, that makes him worth keeping. Everything that I have here was random gear I put on him to do, uh, to do some faction wars. <clears throat> just to, ha uh, to be able to pass a little bit of the levels. And now I'm sorry. He's out. He's out because, like I said, he's not. He's not good. He has. He has bad kit. The kit is bad. Worst epic in the game, in my opinion. They might buff him later on. I don't care. I need. I need some food now, so I'm gonna use him. And boom. That's a possibility. That's my next six star. I will not. Think I will not six star ascend him yet because I do not have banner. I already need a banner for Elhane, and I need a banner for him, so I'm not gonna do that. Because one of the later missions over here will be to ascend a magic champion to 6 stars. So I'm going to wait till I get to that point. I think it's not in this one, but it, it is in the next progress mission. So one of the progress missions you will have is ascend a magic champion, ascend a force, a spirit and a void champion to 6 star. So always keep that in mind when you're working on ch your champions, maybe to try and, uh, and try and keep this in mind. Or for example, I could I could send him to six star for this, uh, because of this mission. But then I will not six star send Frozen Banshee. So that's that's something you know you have to try and prepare. Because if you look at the days that I'm in currently, I'm day 15. So I'm 15 days in. I only have like two six stars. However, I have I have a three more five uh, five stars level 50. So it's like you know I was working on other stuff like that. I was preparing some. Uh, these ones to, to fuse one of the champions for the broad mod to, to pre be prepared for the champion chase. You know, I was splitting my, my views on everything because of the fusion. But yeah, I think this, this is going to be it for today, guys. I hope, you know, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Because like I said, I'm trying to make this series uh, for people that never played the game like this or never played Raid itself so they can learn. So that's why it's like, you know, it's like, I guess, the, the dummy course for Raid. So if other people that watch my content in general see this and like okay why are you mentioning that that's the reason because i'm trying to make this for like everybody but yeah i hope you enjoyed it guys and i will see you in the next one peace love take care bye guys